Here's a simple question. Which planet has the most moons? You know, simple, right? Yeah, not exactly. If you just ask Google, you'll get a pretty clear answer. Saturn, which has 146 moons. Alright, case closed. End of video. Thanks for watching. Of course, as you know, it's not that simple. Saturn is only the current answer. For centuries now, that answer has been changing time and time again with two obvious frontrunners, Jupiter and Saturn, which makes sense given that they're the two largest planets in the solar system after all. It began in the year 1610 with the discovery of the four Galilean moons of Jupiter by, and can you believe it, Galileo. This resulted in Jupiter being known as the planet with the most moons, dethroning Earth, which up until this point was the only planet even known to have a moon. It held this title for more than a century until, in the 18th century, seven different moons were discovered around Saturn, making it the champion of celestial posse building. Jupiter would not strike back until 1938, at which point its total of known moons rose to 11, surpassing Saturn, which only had nine known moons. In 1990, however, the tables turned back in Saturn's favor, then back to Jupiter in 2003, Saturn again in 2019, and back to Jupiter once more at the beginning of this year, with the planet possessing 92 known moons. However, mere months later, in May, a whopping 62 new moons were discovered around Saturn, bringing the total up to 146. Which, I mean, is starting to get into the realm of stupid. So, uh, yeah. As you can tell, the planet with the most moons is constantly changing and will likely continue to go back and forth between Jupiter and Saturn for years to come, as astronomers discover smaller and smaller objects orbiting both. In fact, it's estimated that there are hundreds, if not thousands more waiting to be discovered. So, really, we may never definitively know for sure which one has more. In fact, even Uranus and Neptune could also have hundreds between them. Uranus. You're goddamn right. But that's exactly the thing. The vast, vast majority of these so-called moons of these planets are nothing more than captured asteroids, which is a far cry from what we traditionally think of when we hear the word moon. You know, that being our moon, a large, spherical body rounded under its own gravity in a regular orbit of a planet. In the case of Saturn, this holds especially true, with all of the newly discovered moons having radii of two kilometers or less. Like, I could literally run around one of these things in an hour if it weren't for, you know, there being no air in space. Most of Jupiter's newly discovered satellites are very diminutive in size as well. I mean, if you're considering all of those tiny rocks in Saturn's rings moons, you might as well also consider all of Earth's man-made satellites moons as well, in which case, guess what? Humans win again! Seriously though, this is why I think it's kind of silly to call smaller bodies in orbit around planets moons at all. Maybe, like how we only consider spherical objects to be planets, only spherical objects would be considered actual moons, with objects that are not spherical being classified as dwarf moons, moonlets, or simply just satellites. I mean, it makes sense, why would you put objects as different as Ganymede, a literal planet-sized body, and Deimos, a glorified asteroid in the same exact category with no differentiation. It'd be like trying to classify all of the asteroids and dwarf planets as planets in their own right. You know, way too many and not very logical. Sorry, Pluto. And while we're here, let's discuss the other end of the spectrum, Charon, which is so large in relation to Pluto that both objects orbit a common center of mass outside of Pluto. Should that be considered a moon as well? Or should the pair be considered a binary dwarf planet system? Where do we draw the line for what is and isn't a moon? In fact, I'd say we're facing a similar problem now with the moons of the outer planets that astronomers faced when they kept finding large Kuiper Belt objects. Just as astronomers grew uneasy continuing to call Pluto a planet, we now find it harder and harder to justify calling tiny asteroids around planets moons. Which really makes me wonder how long it'll be until the IAU meets to actually define what a moon is, in the same way they define the word planet. Hmm. Huh. That's another idea. Maybe we should define a moon as an object orbiting a planet that has cleared its orbital neighborhood. Or, you know, is at least the gravitationally dominant object in its orbit. So, if we're going by this proposed new definition of moon, then each planet, and a few dwarf planets, has the following number of moons. In which case, Saturn clearly has the most. 
Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that nature does not care for a way of classifying things, and will likely continue to give us a headache as time goes on. Thanks for watching.